Good morning and welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. My name is Reese Leach. I'm an elder here. We're happy that you could be with us today, worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is a special day in my life, as I'm sure it is in yours. Today is Mother's Day. We all have a mother, and for me it's a great day to honor my mother. My mother is a model and encourager for me, and I'm, I'm really thrilled that she's still with us in our earthly life at 93. She taught me so many things, just like your moms have. But most important was to never give up and to celebrate how to do my best. So today we honor our mothers, living and also with the Lord now. And every day is a chance to honor our mothers. Some of my most joyous moments were with my children and as they entered the world. They've become fine young people and I'm proud to have them as my children. Today, please join me in our call to worship. It's based on Psalm 98. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praise. We sing praises to the Lord with the lyre and the sound of the horn. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it the Lord and those who live in it. We will sing you a new song, O God, for the marvelous things you have done. Let us worship God. Brad is going to say, sing and play for us. Now thanks be all our God. As the sea roars, your name is praised. Waves pounding the shore remind us of your grandeur. By your creative design, birds fly, fish swim, and creatures in the forests and meadows leap and run. All creation chants in praise of your plan for them. As you make our joy complete in the gift of your Son, Christ Jesus, our Savior, we worship you with hearts, hands, and voices in songs of glad adoration. Amen. And now it's time for passing of the peace. Whoever you're worshiping today, or if you care to send them a text, wish them the peace of Christ. It goes around the world and back again. And that's what we are Christians as a group in fellowship. And now please join me in prayers of the people. I encourage you to send me your prayer requests and I'll make sure that they get into the service. Father God, our prayers are focused on family today, specifically mothers and children. 
We thank you, O Lord, that you gave us family and the capacity to create and sustain a family in abundance. So many people today need our prayers, God. We know that, you know that. We can thank you, God, that you listen to all of them. We ask for healing and hope specifically for Donna and Betty Sue and Jeff and Jerry, Steve and Ellen, Bob, Mike and Deborah and Jared and Keith and Tamar. And we ask for praise of the and thanks for the prayers already answered. Our joy is fulfilled and Carolyn and Annette and Steve and Kern, Valerie and Brad and we ask for prayers for Edith and Bill, Genevieve and Glenn, Jackie and Ian, Millie and Ann, and Jimmy and Reese. Lord, we know that you give hope and leadership and encouragement to all of us. And specifically this week to Steve and Sarah, Kim and Heather, Mark and Millie, Donovan and Shelley, and Michael. Protection and peace for all of our students and teachers out there, all of our scouts in Troop 215, and the blessing that was bestowed on our troop this week, that the trailer, trailer that was stolen a few months back has been returned and nothing missing. What a miracle. So we ask for prayers of encouragement for our students, Emily and Kayla, Ashley and Aiden, Doreen and Maylene, and our servicemen and women both home and abroad, we ask you to keep them protected. We ask for strength and endurance for our clergy and a great thanks for Reverend Gill. <clears throat> our first responders, Rick and Steve, that we know, and Jim, that keep us healthy and safe and come calling when we need them. And our healthcare professionals, Lorna and Maureen, we ask for love and hope and peace for those abroad, family and friends, mothers, children in Venezuela, Colombia, Panama, Russia, the Ukraine, Turkey, and England that we know specifically of. But all of these, all of your children are in need of your protection, God. And we ask this in your name with your full power and abundance that we can look to you in times of need and joy. Amen. And now please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll now read out our prayer of confession. Almighty, gracious God, you love us, but we have not loved you. You call, but we have not listened. We walk away from neighborhoods in need, wrapped in our own concerns. We condone evil, prejudice, warfare, and greed. God of grace, help us to admit our sin so that as you come to us in mercy, we may repent, turn to you, and receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And now, we know that through the love and the grace and the forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are truly forgiven. Join me now in reading our affirmation of faith we trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessings, name them one by one, and 
and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. See what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Mother's Day is a wonderful time to remember our mothers, but it's also a time to remember our church, your church. Please give generously or their tithes and offerings. They can be sent to 1844 Hypoluxo Road in Lantana, Florida, 33462.
Please join me now in the prayer of dedication. O God, as the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard your word, so fill us as we come before you in response to Christ's gift of love. By your Spirit, enable us to bear fruit and overcome the world with our faith. Accept our gifts as the first signs of a bountiful harvest and our commitment to labor on behalf of all your children. Through our work, may they be led to believe in your word. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this week will be from Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in a joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Good morning. I wish all of our mothers a very happy Mother's Day, and I hope that this day will be a great blessing to you. Today we are reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, beginning with verse 9. Hear the word of God. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that you joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I'm giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A great ambassador for our Lord was Joseph Scriven, and he wrote that very famous hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, which is rated among people to be in the top ten of favorite hymns of all time, and it's certainly one of my favorite hymns. Joseph Scriven was born in Dublin in 1820. And he, he was a graduate of Trinity College and he had a very bright future. He was engaged to be married to a beautiful young woman, but right before their wedding, she fell off a horse and died. And it was a terrible tragedy and he was devastated and it would have been very easy for him to become very bitter and very downcast. Recovering 
slowly from this, he felt the call from God to go to Canada. And so he immigrated to Canada in 1845, and he was a very humble man, and he decided that he would teach school to young children. And this is what he did. He, he taught children and he also devoted himself to helping the destitute, uh, poor widows, and also those who were mentally challenged. And he especially, especially enjoyed teaching the children because he had the opportunity to share the gospel with them. His home while he was teaching was with an elderly woman. She rented a room to him and he helped, helped her by doing different things to maintain the house. He helped her with her cows, taking care of them, and he also would milk the cows and go into the village and sell the milk and bring her the money. He also would cut up firewood to help to warm this little house and, and also to sell the firewood to help this, this poor lady. When Joseph became very ill later on, he was very, very sick and a friend came to visit him and the neighbor saw a poem written on a sheet of paper which was on a little table in his bedroom and the friend said could I read this little poem and Joseph said that's fine you can read it and he read the poem and, and the words to the poem were were what a friend we have in Jesus and It was a message in this poem that was so powerful. And Joseph said to his friend, I wrote this poem for my mother, who is very sick in Ireland, and I'm going to mail it to her. And I hope it brings her comfort. The neighbor was so impressed that he he did ask for a copy of the poem, and, and he later would take it to a musician who would set it to music, and it would become later one of our classic hymns of all time. In this poem, Joseph contains the great secret of Christian living. What needless pain we bear because we try to do it all on our own and there is that haunting refrain take it to the lord in prayer what a friend we have in jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to god in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. I remember when I was at Princeton Seminary how a group of international students would gather together in different dorm rooms and together as a group of students who came from Nigeria, Puerto Rico, Trinidad from Ireland would gather together and we would we'd sing this hymn and we would pray. And I always remember just the feeling of the presence of God when we sang this hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Now take all of your, your burdens and worries to the Lord in prayer.
Now, Jesus reminds us that we are, again, to abide in him. We are to be close to the Lord so that we might have those Christ-like qualities in our life. And that as we abide in our Lord Jesus Christ, we will have Jesus' joy. That Jesus was always very positive and always encouraging. And he had that inner joy from God. And Jesus wants us to have that same joy and trust in our lives. Abide in me. I chose you, Jesus reminds us. And what a blessing that is to know that the Lord chose us to be part of his family. We experience that when we abide in him. Because we have contact with God. God is close to us. We can communicate with the Lord through prayer. And there is a deep joy and inner peace knowing that God is not distant but God is close by. In verse let's see where we have uh, verse 14, we have this beautiful verse, "You are my friends if you do what I command you. You are my friends. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father it is a great honor to be a servant of God a great blessing for us all but our Lord Jesus Christ takes it to a new new level he, he elevates us so that we might be friends, that there is a much closer relationship as a friend. We have a new relationship. We have access to our God. I remember when I graduated from high school I had studied with a speech and drama teacher who was a great source of encouragement to me in my junior and senior years. He had encouraged me to go on to college and to strive to do my best, to use my gifts. And his name was Mr. Anzalone. And I remember right after I graduated from high school. I, I saw him later on at some event and, and I said, Mr. Anzalone, uh, thank you for your encouragement. I'm enjoying going to college now and I appreciate what you taught me and I'm, I'm studying now and I enjoy my speech classes and, and I just want to thank you for your for giving me the opportunity to be in different shows that, that really helped to build my confidence up in life. Thank you so much, Mr. Anzalone. And he said to me, Randall, don't call me Mr. Anzalone, but you can call me Frank. It was at that moment I realized that our relationship had changed. It was on a different level as friends. And that is what we see here with our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus calls us friends. I have chosen you and you represent me in the world, Jesus said. Friends. A long time ago, in the ancient world, 
kings had royal courts. And in the royal courts, there were, there were people who were called the friends of the king. And the friends were a special group. The friends always had access to the king. And so if the king was away or whatever, and somewhere in the palace, you could go and find the king in his private quarters. You, you just had access to see the king. And whenever the king needed to make a decision about the future, or do something important, he would gather together with the friends of the court before he would meet with other rulers or with his generals. Our Lord Jesus calls us friends. We have that access. A week ago, I was participating on a Zoom meeting with some people from the Boynton Beach Historical Society. And we were looking at a program and studying the wreck of the Coquimbo, which is right out here uh, off our coast, Boynton Beach, near the Boynton Beach Oceanfront Park. And looking at it, and people were calling in and leaving messages, asking how deep was the water, was the sand still covering the shipwreck, had all sorts of different questions, and it was, it was a very fine program. And then it was time for the program to end, and somebody came on, and it was the mayor of Boynton Beach, Stephen Grant. And he said how much he appreciated the program and, and working with us and helping to preserve things that were still important to us for our, our history and, and how he was soon going to be going to Tallahassee to seek some funds to help with different projects to help enhance our community. And then he said, well, Good night, everybody. I'm glad that we were able to be together on this meeting. And at that moment, his young daughter, who was probably about, about two years old, came running up and, and gave him a big hug. And it was just a very sweet moment where she just came running up and gave her father a hug while he was still on the air on the Zoom meeting. That's the kind of access that we have to our Lord. The Lord is near to us and wants us to go to him in prayer and to share our deepest thoughts and deepest needs and deepest concerns. And he will listen to us and he promises to help bear our burdens, give us guidance, and help us through this life. What a friend we have in Jesus. Jesus Christ is your best friend. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your love for us and that you call us friends. And what an amazing thing to think about that. Lord, help us to go and bear fruit for you. Help us to let others know how much you love them too. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh
Christ go with you all. Amen. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour every day. Go now and stay, steadfast, strong, and true. Oh, oh, oh. 